every year there is the risk of households experiencing a domestic fire. Most fires that occur result in damage to the property or equipment, but unfortunately some cause serious injury or prove fatal. As a home care worker, you will be working with a group of people who are particularly vulnerable. Sadly, many of those killed in domestic fires are at higher risk if they are over 60 years of age or the risk increases further if they are over 75. Live alone. Suffer mobility issues including dementia or memory loss. Have alcohol or drug dependency. Have a learning disability or smoke. In Surrey, for instance, in a recent four-year period, the only people to have died in a fire in their home had one or more of these risk factors. The people you support are likely to have one or more of these health problems, which will be noted in their care plan and risk assessment. So, what are your responsibilities as a care worker and what can you do to prevent fires as well as the distress and damage that they cause? The overall risk of fire in an individual's property will have been made by your manager or supervisor during their original assessment. They will have evaluated the risks and decided whether or not existing precautions are adequate. However, you are the one who will see any alterations in the individual's situation or their behaviour on a daily or weekly basis. As a domiciliary care worker, you have a legal responsibility under the Health and Safety at Work Act to be observant and to report any hazards that may affect your own or an individual's health or safety to your manager. You also have a legal responsibility not to put others at risk as a result of your actions or inactions. With your induction training, you should be aware of the agreed ways of working and the safe systems of work to follow. If you are unsure of any controls, you must ask your manager for advice. Warning signs to watch for. In the kitchen. Burnt pans or burnt food. Rubbish or paper stored around the cooker hob. In the lounge. Burn marks or discarded cigarettes on carpets and furniture. Overfilled ashtrays. Use of candles. No fire guard on open or gas fires. In bedrooms, burn marks on bedding or carpet, use of old or damaged electric blankets. In all rooms, overloaded electrical sockets, storage around electricity meters, electrical gas heaters close to storage, furniture or drying clothes. On the person, burn marks on clothes. There may be additional help that you can obtain from the fire service to increase protection in the home of the person at higher risk. Most of it is free. These include advice from specialist fire service officers, smoke alarms linked to a monitoring centre. These often use the same monitoring centre as emergency pendants. Vibrating pillows for the hard of hearing, linked to linked smoke alarms as mentioned above. Fire retardant bedding. Fire retardant furniture throws. Other services are available at a cost and include cooker cutout systems, adult at risk bedroom door identification stickers, and portable and fixed sprinkler systems. Some facts to consider are a standard domestic smoke alarm may not protect someone with dementia. If a person is sedated at night, a standard domestic smoke alarm may not wake them. If someone is confined to bed, a domestic smoke alarm may not save them. If a cigarette is dropped whilst falling asleep in bed, it may be too late to save someone. A sprinkler causes less water damage than the fire service hoses. There may be cases in some homes where people still have old upholstered furniture that does not comply with modern safety standards. To know whether furniture is safety compliant, Look for a label on any external surface of the item stating that it complies with the Furniture and Furnishings Regulations. Furniture manufactured before 1950 is unlikely to contain foam and will not have this label. Apart from this, any upholstered furniture that does not have the cigarette and match test label should ideally be removed from the premises as it could be very dangerous. <laughs> 